1989, Bob Lazar pop, pops onto the scene. And, uh, and you wanted to meet him, you did meet him. Yeah. We hung out, we, we would go out <clears> and, <throat> yeah. and just uh, BS yeah. for hours. We'd go yeah. up to Rachel, go out in the desert. Right. Um, a lot has been written about you and Bob, your relationship. You went into business for a while. How you've sort of, uh, you find him to be a fraud. He made it all up. You parted ways, it was acrimonious. Can you uh, talk about that a little bit? <clears throat> I never, I never viewed uh, uh, Bob as as being a fraud, uh, as to you know Area 51 and all of that. I spent quite a bit of, I spent a, a certain amount of time in conversations with him. We put a a little bitty uh, business together and uh, tried to do something for about four months uh, in that business, and so. Um, there, I had opportunities to test him, like you would, like anybody would, you know, and and see if he repeated the same thing and 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 stuck to his stories and and or what kinds of things could I find that were not legitimate, and <clears throat> I didn't find much. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't say it was zero, but I didn't find much that I could say. Oh no, this guy is 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 absolutely off. Uh, uh, you know, in, in, in what he's telling me is, is the truth. And uh, so I wouldn't say that, that, um, that he had not experienced uh, a lot of the things he's, he claims that he has. You think he did? I think the odds, I, I would look at it in terms of odds. This is Las Vegas, right? Yeah. So I would say the odds are Bob Lazar has, for the most part on everything he has said, it has been telling the truth. Those are the odds. And I would say, if you're betting against that, you're betting against substantial odds, and that the chances are you're going to lose. If you, if you think that he's been lying, the chances are you're going to lose. There's a, also the allegation about Element 115. Do you think Element 115 exist, or existed, and that he had a piece of it at one point? And did he try to fool you with the 115 and the aerogel? <clears throat> I discovered, um, that aerogel uh, was not what it purported, what he, I guess what he was saying it was, and it was, it was accidentally, I accidentally uh, came across the fact that this, this beautiful, smoky, very lightweight kind of crystal. Weird, yeah. Uh, was, was aerogel, totally by accident. I happened to be going through a magazine, and I thought, oh my God, I saw a picture of this material in the magazine, and I pursued it and found out it was alcohol-based, it was aerogel, it was invented in the 1930s, and it could be used as an insulative kind of material. It was five uh, times the weight of air, and it was beautiful. It looked like a kind of a gem. Gee, you'd want to put it on a, you know, a woman's finger because it looked so beautiful as a big ring. Um, that was the only thing that I, that I really felt um, that of, of, of a physical piece of something so I have no opinion about the uh, element 115. I, I think um, um, the Bob was intriguing because he knew so much. He's a smart guy. He, he's he's no dummy. He's a smart man. He's a smart guy, um, and very creative. And uh, so again, I, I say that um, the preponderance of evidence to me is in his favor. That he's 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 by and large legitimate. He had told me that that aerogel arrived with the 115. It was like packing material, and he didn't know what it was. But later, I guess he developed a story that he told you about what he thought it was. But he didn't decide to say it was 115. Well, it doesn't mean that he uh, uh, would necessarily know what the original custody of the material was, right? right? Just because it's associated with something doesn't mean that this bottle of water, which stands next to something else peculiar, right. uh, they're both connected. You know, so it means he may have uh, leapt to that assumption that the aerogel, because it was in association physically nearby or whatever with the 115, was somehow connected, and he just didn't know what it was. You know, That's so what I, told I me. would give him the benefit of the doubt on that, and because and, I don't have anything else that is more concrete. I'd rather not say, well, somebody 
uh, you know, it, that he, he, he knew differently. One of the tests you did was to see if he was motivated by money. And that, what you've told me is that you yeah. didn't think he was. I, I, I tempted him. I, I, you know, I, I, in different ways, I can remember uh, uh, in a conversation that we had, and he probably isn't even aware uh, that I did that. But I, I offered him money. <clears throat> uh, I forget the circumstances now, but uh, it didn't tempt him at all. And, I, and so I thought, well, either he's awful goddamn peculiar, you know, or there's something legitimate going on here. You went into business to build a certain device. He set him up in a small lab to see how he did, and then you split. After a while, you split up. Yeah. A lot of stories told about that. But yeah. What's the bottom line for you? <clears throat> I had a gal working for me that uh, would check up on him, and, uh, and I was out of town at the time, and uh, she says, and so I said, okay, uh, what, what's going on in the lab? And she said, well, I'm really sorry to tell you, it's being used as a, as a little warehouse for, for furniture, you know? And I thought, oh, geez, okay. That's, I, I can see, I see the signs now. Okay, that, that's the end of it. That he just wasn't doing what he said he would do. You know? Correct, yeah. correct. So well, that was, sounds very Bob-like, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it, like it was a storehouse, uh, you know, warehouse for him because he had this furniture and no place to put it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that was all.